Hey everyone, I'm Liz Ferry, and today I'm going to show you how I made this crochet baby doll. Some things you'll need for this project are a crochet hook, I'm using a size E, a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, some stitch markers, some fiber fill, I'm using this craft wire that's 22 gauge, and to make the body I used Premier's Just Yarn, this is the yarn they sell at Dollar Tree, in the color Petal. To make the eyes, you could use safety eyes or embroider on the eyes, but I used this scrap of blue yarn from Red Heart Super Saver to make the eyes for this doll. You can also find a pattern for this project in my Ravelry store at the link in the description below. I'm going to begin my work by creating a double magic circle with six stitches of single crochet. If you want to learn how to make a magic circle, or a double magic circle, you can check out my tutorial at the link in the description below. Next, I'm going to increase my work. Since I'm adding 6 stitches of increase for every row of increase, I can find how many increases to add for each row by dividing the number of stitches in that row by 6. To increase this stitch, I'm going to single crochet into that stitch, then I'll single crochet again into the same stitch to increase the stitch. Since I have 6 stitches in my row, I'm going to increase every stitch of this row. In the next row, I'm going to increase every second stitch. Then in the next row after that, I'll increase every third stitch, and that's going to be my last row of increase. If you want to continue to increase the doll, you can continue increasing in that pattern. In the next row, you would increase every fourth stitch, then every fifth stitch, and so on, until the size of the top of the head of your doll reaches the size that you want. For my doll, I just increased three rows, so I increased every stitch in the first row, then I increased every second stitch, then every third stitch. If you want to learn more about how to increase, you can find a link to my increasing tutorial in the description below. Alright, I finished with all of my rows of increase. In my last row of increase, I increased every third stitch. For this doll, for this doll I'm going to single crochet for six more rows. Alright, now I've finished with six rows of single crochet. Next step is going to be to decrease the head to make the neck, but first I'm going to add the eyes and add some fiber fill. To make the eyes, I'm going to use a scrap of blue yarn. I'm going to double up my yarn so that I can make the knot a little thicker, which will result in a slightly larger pair of eyes. Now I'm going to place the eyes at the front of the face. I'm going to place the eyes a little bit closer to the beginning of the row, because the beginning of the row is going to drift to the right as I work. So if I offset the eyes, they'll end up closer to the front of the face. So to place the eyes, I'm just going to figure out where I want the eyes to go, and then I'm going to pull the tails of my knot to the inside of the head. Then I'm going to pull the tails at the top of the eye to the inside of the head, one row above where I put the bottom tails. And I'm not going to fasten that yet, because I need to place the other eye, and I want to make sure that they're in the final place that I want them to be before I fasten them.
Once I'm satisfied with the placement of the eyes, I'm just going to tie each of the sets of tails together using a double knot. If you want them to be attached even more securely, you can sew the tails to the inside of the head, which is what I would suggest you do if you're making it for a child or an infant. Otherwise, tying the knots is just fine. Next, I'm going to add fiber fill all around the inside of the head. I'm going to move the tails for the eyes out of the way. And then I'm just going to add fiber fill all around. Then I'll just go ahead and stuff all of the tails for the eyes to the inside, but more in the middle so that none of the blue tails will be visible through the stitches. When I'm finished, I'm going to shape the eyes and the face a little bit more, but I'll do that when I'm finished. Next, I'm going to decrease for three rows. In the first row, I'm going to decrease every third stitch, then every second stitch, then every stitch of the row. Exactly the opposite of how I increased the head. If you want to see some methods for how to decrease, I'll put a link to my decreasing tutorial in the description below. To decrease, I'm going to insert my hook into the front loop of the next two stitches, pull up a loop, and single crochet those stitches together to decrease. Okay, now I've finished with three rows of decrease to close up the head. If you want to create a long neck for the doll, you could single crochet for however many rows that you like until the neck reaches the length that you want. I'm going to skip that step for this doll and create a doll without a neck. Before I go on though, I'm going to finish filling up the head with fiber fill. Now I'm going to start to increase again to create the body. I'm going to increase for two rows. Since I have six stitches in my row, I'm going to increase every stitch of this row. In the next row, I'm going to increase every second stitch. If you want to continue to increase the doll, you can continue increasing in that pattern. In the next row, you would increase every third stitch, then every fourth stitch, then every fifth stitch, and so on. Just make sure that you're increasing six times per row. So I'm going to increase my work for two rows. Okay, I finished increasing my work to the size that I want the body to be. Now I'm going to create rows of single crochet until I get to where I want the arms to go. I'm just going to single crochet for one row, but if you'd like the arms to be a little lower, or if you're making a larger doll, you can add more rows of single crochet if you like. So I'm just going to single crochet for one row. All right, I've gotten to where I want to place the arms. Next, I'm going to make the wire skeleton, and I'm going to place it into the body before I continue working. I'm going to make my wire skeleton with a 4.5 inch neck and torso, two arms, each 3.5 inches long, and two legs, each 4 inches long. Place the arms 2.5 inches from the top of the neck, and 2 inches from the legs. I ended up wrapping six layers of wire around my skeleton because I want this skeleton to be able to hold a lot of poses. 
but if you want to use your skeleton just as a basic structure, then you can wrap fewer layers than six. If you're making a particularly big or heavy doll, you may want to wrap even more layers of wire so that the skeleton can properly support the doll. If you want to see how I make my wire skeletons, you can find a link to my wire skeleton tutorial in the description below. Now I'm going to insert the wire skeleton into the doll's body as I work. So I'm going to single crochet into each stitch for one row, and I'm going to work my single crochet row over the arms of the skeleton. So first I'm going to bend out the arms, then I'm going to insert the neck of the skeleton into the doll's head. And I like to just push it through the fluff until I can see the top of the wire sticking through the stitches. And now I'm just going to use a bobby pin to sort of temporarily fasten the top of the wire to the top of the doll's head. Now I'm going to work my row of single crochet over the arms of the skeleton. So I'm going to line up the arms of the skeleton with the stitches where I want the arms to end up. Then I'm going to single crochet until I get to that stitch and I'll work right over that skeleton. Where the arms of your doll's skeleton go will very much depend on how much the first stitch of the row has drifted over time. For this doll, it looks like I'm going to be single crocheting into the first three stitches of the row. Then I'm going to move the arm skeleton so that it's right next to the stitch that I just made, and then I'll work into the fourth stitch of the row. And now the doll's arm skeleton is just sticking straight through the stitches. So I'm going to bend that out of my way for now. And then I'm going to work until I get to the arm skeleton on the other side. It looks like this time I'm going to single crochet for nine more stitches. And then just like before, I'm going to move the skeleton right next to the stitch that I just made and then work into the next stitch right over the skeleton. Now I'm just going to single crochet into the rest of the stitches of the row. Now I'm going to continue to add more rows until the doll's body reaches the length that I want. I'm going to single crochet four more rows. All right, I've elongated the body for four more rows. The next part of the body that I would make is the doll's rear but I'm actually going to pull my loop open and put this aside for now, and I'm going to create the arms next. First, I'm gonna create a double magic circle with six stitches. Then I'm gonna increase every stitch for one row. Okay, I've finished my row of increase. Now I'm going to single crochet into each stitch for one row. So I've completed the hand. Now I'm going to make the wrist. So to taper in the wrist, I'm gonna decrease every stitch for one row then to widen the arm, after making the wrist, I'm going to increase every stitch for one row.
so I finished my row of decrease for the wrist. Now I'm going to increase every stitch of the row to widen the arm. Okay, I finished widening the arm. Now I'm gonna single crochet for two rows to lengthen the arm before I make the elbow. Okay, so now I've finished with my two rows of lengthening the arm. Now to make the elbow, I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did to make the wrist. I'm going to decrease every stitch for one row, then I'll increase every stitch for one row. Okay, now I've finished my row of decreasing every stitch. Next, I'm going to do a row of increasing every stitch to widen the upper arm. Okay, I've finished my row of increasing every stitch. Now I'm going to single crochet for two rows to lengthen the upper arm. All right, now I've finished with two more rows of single crochet. Now to finish up the arm, I'm just going to decrease every stitch to close up the top. When I'm finished, I'll slip stitch to the first stitch of the row, cut off a long tail of my yarn, and I'll use that tail to sew the arm to the body. Now I just need to repeat that to create a second arm. And now I'll add fiber fill to the arms. First, I'm going to push the other tail into the arm. I like to stuff the arms using the end of my crochet hook since the hole is so small to get the fiber fill in there with just your fingers. You could also use a bamboo chopstick or a wooden dowel, but I like to use the end of my hook. Sometimes I also use the other end of the hook to loosen up the fiber fill on the inside of the arm so that it doesn't get too densely packed. Once the arm is mostly stuffed, I'm going to go ahead and push the arm onto the wire skeleton arm. I'm going to push the arm onto the skeleton until the little wire loop pops out of the hand, and then I'll temporarily fasten the arm down to the skeleton using a bobby pin. Then I'm just going to add a little bit more fiber fill to the upper arm. Now I'm going to use a sharp tapestry needle to sew the arm to the body. I'm going to do this using a ladder stitch.
And then I'm just going to sew in the end. And cut off the yarn. Now I'll repeat the same thing with the arm on the other side. Next, I'm going to add fingers to the end of the hand. This step is optional. If you like, you can skip this step. Now I'm going to hold the doll with the hand facing down. First, I'm going to pull up a loop around the post where I want the first finger to go. Then I'm going to chain three. and slip stitch into the third chain from the hook. Then I'll slip stitch around the same post that I chained up from. Now I'm going to slip stitch around the next post where I want the next finger to go. Then I'm going to chain three, slip stitch in the third chain from the hook, then slip stitch around the same post. And I'm going to repeat that for each finger. Slip stitch around the next post where I want the next finger to go, chain three, slip stitch into the third chain from the hook, and slip stitch around the same post. Now I'm going to repeat that one more time so that I have a total of four fingers. If you like, you can add five fingers, but I find that it looks a little crowded with five. So I'm going to slip stitch around the next post, chain three, slip stitch in the third chain from the hook, and then slip stitch around the same post. And since that's my last finger, I'm going to cut off the yarn, and I'm going to sew in this end. I'm also going to use this end to sew the loop of the wire skeleton in place so that it doesn't shift out of place. Now before I continue, I'm going to use a scrap of yarn to fasten the loop at the top of the skeleton to the top of the head, just like I did for the arms. And this is just going to keep the skeleton from wandering out of place over time. Before I make the rest of the body, I'm going to take a little break so that this video doesn't end up too long. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, press the like button. If you made this or any of my other projects, I'd love to see it. You can tag me or message me on Instagram at LizFairy. And if you'd like to help out the channel, you can donate to my Patreon. You can find my Patreon at patreon.com slash fairyrings. Or if you'd like to donate to the channel in a different way, you can leave a super thanks on the video right here on YouTube. In the next video, I'll show you how to make the lower half of the doll's body. So make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and click the bell to receive notifications every time I post a new video so that you don't miss the next one. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!